Alright, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Master of Debate Tours Reunited. This is the podcast edition, episode 1. This is a podcast that has all things to do with FIFA Career Mode on YouTube, off of YouTube, I guess. And today I'm joined by the lovely, lovely Sam, aka Guardy FIFA. Say say hello. Hello everybody. How is everyone? <laughs> and, and of course we have Jason Flickify coming hey, in. Hey, what's, what's up guys? And in the middle we have the man, the myth, the legend, the bear. That's not my name. Tyler, T Ray all day. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how's it going? I thought you were I thought you were gonna go like rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> that too. There you go. And Tyler Tyler's wearing Tyler wearing a Tyler, why are you wearing a bear mask? Tell tell the people. Because I'm sick? Yeah, he's sick and he thinks he looks ugly, so he's just gonna wear the bear mask from here on out. But today, this podcast is kinda centric around uh, basically talking all things career mode and the big topic right now that's kind of going around we're going to be on drama alert about this but but not really is mjh recently released you know his new munching gladback career mode and episode one came in with a, a lot of controversy it seems like a lot of people were upset with what he did with the team um basically a little bit of backstory is he sold a couple of the more prominent players uh han being one of them and he brought in what people deemed as generic signings, the most notably uh, Donald Brion Bolo, who, if you've been on anyone's career mode ever, you've probably seen the comments, sign and Bolo, sign and Bolo, sign and Bolo. And today we're going to discuss, was MGH wrong to sign Mbolo? And is any really career mode YouTuber really wrong to sign Mbolo? But for this argument specifically is mgh wrong i'm gonna go ahead does anybody want to go ahead and jump on and get in these opening points uh or who wants who wants it who wants it come get the titty well i'll start things off i think it's important to understand why mgh did in the first place and his argument for why he signed in bolo is that he hadn't used him this year or i think ever in fifa so that was the reason he signed in the first place regardless of if he is overused or not in career mode. We'll determine that later. Uh, he actually he used him last year, but he has he has yet to use him this year, I believe. And among other things, it's it seems like a lot of the if we're gonna go ahead to to really capture to really capture how much hate that he got. He actually didn't get too much like uh, vitriol early on, but like this is this is some of the comments. I'm just gonna read some of these comments. Jaja Blintior says, I was really excited when I saw you start with this club, but now you did very unrealistic transfers. Fuck off with your young talents. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Putting Stranzel away is just so dumb. A 80 rated player who is easily can play two seasons in the starting 11. You need some <clears throat> older leaders in your team, and it's almost the same Wath. He spelled it wrong. Uh, same, I'm guessing, same worth. Same with Han. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> And then, like, Bailey and Juga, the Portuguese, are young talents, so buy them, but they're far away from realistic. Come on, man, you could do better. That one had 65 likes and no dislikes with four replies. Wow. Uh, Tom Yates with 38 likes. This says, don't trade so many uh, uh, Tom Tom Quates says this. No, his name is Tom Oates. Don't trade so many players, you fat ginger cunt. 38 likes, Jeez. zero dislikes. Okay. <laughs> Savage. Yeah. Five replies. Uh, let's see. Drag back silence. This one might hurt the most. Me at the start of the episode. Yes, this is going to be so hype. Me at the end of the episode. Well, I expected too much. Jesus. 103 wow. likes. Wow. Zero dislikes. Like, it's... <laughs> to be fair, there there are some... There are some uh, definite... There's support on there. It's like, hey, who's really hyped for that? And there are, there are definite mm -hmm. uh, comments that are like that that have around like 100, 200 likes as well. So he definitely has his fanboys there. But he goes... It definitely got to MGH, and he went ahead and he, he let it be known on Twitter. And I'm going to go ahead and read you guys what he wrote on Twitter right here. And this is basically... Uh, he says, never use Bailey. Haven't seen as many YouTubers buy him. Never use jo uh, Yota. Or is it Jota? I think it's Yota. Pretty unknown talent. How are they boring and generic signings? Haven't used Mbolo this year, so I wanted to use him in my crew mode. Apparently, that makes me a shit YouTuber. Winky face. And then it gets a little bit darker from here. He says, every year, uh, every year that, uh, that goes by doing this, it feels, uh, it feels the comments get more and more toxic. Kind of, now, mm, frowning face. 
I miss the old days where I could sign players and it, that I really wanted to use. And people, and people would just understand and enjoy it. Now people get mad. And he's also saying, also people said, uh, also people said I sold Strandl and Jancic. I can't pronounce these names. I'm terrible at pronouncing them. I Janchi. apologize. Janchi. 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 Yeah. They're, uh, they're two players I just don't like. You can't make everyone happy. Kind of crying happy face. So what do you guys think? Sam, what do you think? Was he, was he right to be selling those players and bringing in generic signings? Do you even think that Mbolo is a generic signing? I think purchasing Mbolo in a Bundesliga club is perfectly all right. He's been linked with Bundesliga clubs before, probably most notably Wolfsburg. Um, so I think signing a striker, Mbolo especially, um, going to Borussia Mönchengladbach, a pretty prestigious club in Germany, I don't think that's unrealistic. I don't agree with selling the likes of Stranzel and, and like especially the two main centre-backs. Stranzel, obviously, because he's a bit older. Um, I think if you want to do a realistic career mode, you need to have older players because you look at... A majority of teams, they have older players, the leaders of the team that have been there for a while. Um, I don't know why he doesn't like Janschke or whatever his name is, because he's a beast center back in a few years. Like he, He's really, really good in career mode, so I don't know why he doesn't like him. Um, but with Stranzel, obviously, he's not the quickest and stuff, so I can understand why he'd sell him, but you can't say that you want to make it realistic by signing younger talent, but then getting rid of your older talent, especially players that still have a prominent role at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, so I don't think he's being unrealistic signing Mbolo. I have no problem with him signing Mbolo, especially because he hasn't used him. He, and it's almost like everybody says that Mbolo is oversigned, but no one actually signs him. It's just people wanting him to be signed. Like, I can't mm -hmm. think of too many career modes where Mbolo has been signed. More so than voice. anything, it's just sort of like an idea that Mbolo is an oversigned player off camera. Like, people that do career modes in general sign Mbolo. So people on YouTube shouldn't sign Mbolo. It's sort of a weird place to be. I have no problem with him signing Mbolo because I could see him at Borussia Mönchengladbach. and Gladbach. I could see him at Wolfsburg. I could see him at a lot of Bundesliga clubs. So I have no problem with it personally. I want to ask, all of us do career mode. All of us have like a good amount of subs. We watch a fair amount of, of career mode YouTube. I can't name besides myself in MGH a career mode that is signed Mbolo. Can you guys name one? No. Like, that's cr that's crazy. <laughs> that, yeah. like, it's, yeah, but it's, Sam, Sam, you nail it on the head. It's just, like, it's it's an idea that he's just it's so idea, oversigned, yeah. but no yeah. one actually, over it's a misnomer. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Tyler, where do you fall? Do you think MGH was, was wrong to buy Mbolo? I agree with Sam. Like, I could see him going to Bruce Munch and Gladback, especially because Shaka used to play at his former club. They both used to play for Basel, so it's kind of realistic in that sense. But I don't agree with signing the two other players he signed. Like, a Portuguese guy going to the Bundesliga is a little bit weird. And then bringing in an Ivory Coast center back to the Bundesliga is a little bit weird, especially when you're selling your captain center back to bring him in. That's the only two things that bug me that much. Everything mm. else is fine with, though. Mm. And you're okay with like him selling those players just because he doesn't like them? Stronzel was weird because he was only worth like 2.5 million anyway, and he was 80 rated. So it's like if you're gonna sell someone that's 80 rated, he should be at least worth a bit of money. Otherwise, you you can use him in your team. Like he can help you out if he's 80 rated. Mm -hmm. Even as a rotation player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's dumb. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess I'll have to play devil's advocate, and I'm gonna argue. I actually agree with you. I'm perfectly fine with him signing in Bolo. I'm not an expert on the Bundesliga or Mönchengladbach. There were some arguments in the in the comments saying that like this would never happen. Mbolo would never come to, would never come to you know like uh, Mönchengladbach or whatever. And for me, I don't I don't know how that goes. But I think what MGH has fallen guilty for, or not really like guilty, but what what people have seemed deemed wrong for him is that I think above anything else is that it is a generic signing or a lazy signing by the standards of a person of mgh's caliber he is arguably you know some people might argue yes or no but he is the godfather of career mode he has the most subs of anybody doing career mode on youtube and for him to sign in bolo i'm not saying it is is lazy but you can see it as lazy as almost everybody who 
who loves career mode knows who Mbolo is and they could make that signing. And I think that when you watch an MGH video, you're expected, he's expected to be of a higher caliber. He's supposed to be like the mastermind. He's supposed to be making all these moves that you, the Joe Schmo watching him can't do. And when he does something like he signs an Mbolo, you're like, that's not really that. Imp- I've seen this. I could do this myself. It's not that impressive to me. And since, and when he goes back to like, Years ago, when he's talking about, like, oh, I could just sign whoever a bunch of years ago and people would be happy with it. That's when he was smaller. And secondly, the people that watch him now are way more educated and way more nerdy about career mode than they were a couple of years ago. We have, we have, we have, like, they're constantly updating rosters every single week. We have, we have, like, um, like, so FIFA who's updated every single week, alt, uh, Futhead. We've had uh, Ultra FIFA, all these freaking sites that basically tell us these are like the top players that always get going. And he's gotten so much bigger now that I feel like he, he's kind of become a prisoner. <laughs> he really can't make everyone happy. Like whatever he yeah. does now is like mm-hmm. he he almost has to be resigned to the fact that he's gotten to a point where he's so big that he's going to piss off people whatever he does. And it's unfortunate. I think he's it should be fine. Like as all of us have been in this situation where it's just like if you sign an over uh, like over signed player you're gonna get shit for it and i think for him to think that he could sign in bolo and he wasn't gonna get shit for it is a little bit naive especially yeah. for someone who's done it for so long but we shouldn't but that's besides the point that we shouldn't get mad at him for signing in bolo because that's a good signing definitively if you're playing career mode and you sign in bolo He's a great young player. He's got amazing stats, and he has the potential to become one of the best players in the game. Definitively, that's the best choice. But it comes down to, do you watch him for entertainment, or do you watch him because he's because you want him to do the best that he can with Munch and Gladback? Because you want him to do the best at Munch and Gladback, in Bolo, you shouldn't have any problem with it. But if you watch him for entertainment, then I could see the why you wouldn't want him to sign in Bolo. I mean, yeah. he was saying um, the comment about how back in the day he could sign anybody and and no one would care. Like, I remember I, I recently one of his recommended videos from FIFA 12 came up in my <laughs> recommended videos. I don't know why. Um, so I decided to watch it, and it's his Barcelona one. And I think that was the one that I, I – I think that's the first career mode I ever watched of MGH. I think it's FIFA 12 Barcelona career mode was the first one I ever watched. And he signed Ramos in that career mode. Oh, so. shit. Yeah, I guess back in the day, he he really could sign whoever he wanted. Yeah, um, seriously. But I agree with B, because back then, career mode, well, I don't think it was as developed, you know, as far as the viewership and as far as audience for it wasn't as developed. And I don't know, I think he's right. In back in the day, you could sign whoever you wanted and people would just watch you and appreciate it because back in the day, it was sort of a monopoly. No one really did career modes. It was MJ or nothing back in FIFA 12, from what I can remember. Um so yeah, he he really did have you know the roam of of the land, I guess. But now he's sort of not that Embolo going to Gladbach is as bad as Ramos going to Barcelona, but still, I think uh, he has to think about his signings a bit more. Not in terms of himself, but in terms of what people will see it as. As what you were saying, be like people will see that signing of Embolo and be like, yeah, that's sort of. Not a bad signing or an unrealistic signing, just an underwhelming signing. Like, really? He went from mm-hmm. Bolo? Like, it's too obvious. So I understand where people come from when when they have that sort of take on it. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you see any negatives to this? And also, I think it's... Yeah, Sam's proven the point of that. It's it's a savvier audience now. It's just a more educated, savvier audience. And <laughs> it's kind of a struggle. And what Sam was saying is that there back then you could just do signings for signings because he had a monopoly on it and now you have you have all these new you have you have so much career mode on youtube now you know you have docs you have channy you have Chez, you have all these people i apologize for everyone that i missed but <laughs> master Bucks, you know all of them out there that you're gonna see like almost every single player get signed so it's really hard for to be a you know really original in this uh, in this format now. Jason, you seem like you're you're biting at the bit to say something. Oh yeah, I've I've got some uh, some views on the topic. Well, first off, I think it's like it's important to look at the role of content creators as influencers for their viewers in terms of players that their uh, viewers might use. I mean, like you guys have kind of said, I'll reiterate it. Everyone's heard of Mbolo. Um, his other signings, you know, a little less so. I mean, those aren't players that I've necessarily necessarily seen used a lot in career mode. So I think those are good players. Um, 
but in terms of like how how transfers have changed since him doing YouTube in 2012 and now, I think YouTube's changed quite a bit and the resources available have changed quite a bit. Um, now we have sites like SoFIFA and there's just so many resources available that you can... There's not really these underused players because you can usually find them on SoFIFA, they get upvoted. Like if they have high potential and they're really cheap, they get upvoted. And then in terms of like YouTube, I think we have... To, well, creators have to hold... Well, no. What I wanted to say is that uh, viewers hold creators a lot more accountable. I think they have a much greater voice now on YouTube than they did back in 2012 when it was a pretty small audience. Now it's it's pretty big time. Yeah, definitely. And what I want to like, but what I do want to point out, like, I'm not, I'm totally for. Like, I was just playing devil's advocate. I'm totally for MJH signing and Bolo, uh-huh. and I think that the audience should be okay with it. Like personally, that's my opinion. It's like it's fine. He signed in Bolo. It makes sense. It's going to be maybe might, might not be the realistic, like most realistic <laughs> signing. And even if it isn't, like it makes a lot of sense within the parameters of the game. And that's kind of a, that's kind of something that only exists in the career mode community. If you think about it, I don't think that there's well, I guess I guess in any like sports franchise game, there is this subset of of people within like the viewership that loves <laughs> realism. That like wants a career mode to be as realistic as possible. Only signings like you need to know every single like you need to know who the kit man is and his like uh, and his children's name and you need to be able to like make only the most logical signings possible. And there are people that are just like, holy shit, you signed Eden Hazard for PSG. Like it's like they're within the game. That's incredible. If you just look at it as FIFA as a video game, for you to take like Stoke and like buy Neymar is incredible in the parameters of a video game in real life that's stupid <laughs> like i think we're all in agreement but there is this weird like dichotomy that exists on youtube of where like half your viewers <clears throat> want to be absolutely realistic and the other half uh like just enjoy it for like uh you playing the game well like you've gamed the system really well tyler how do you feel about like realistic versus kind of fantasy in career modes do you do you go more to one side i think like el de niro he's coming back to career mode he said it best once upon a time probably fifa 15 he said he does his first one or two seasons realistic and then after that he just goes completely unrealistic and signs like as many big names as he can can and i think that's kind of the best way to go about it because it gets both viewers both types of viewers happy because there's the type of viewer that loves the realistic and then there's the type of viewer that just hate loves everything fantasy so if you can do that like one or two seasons of real and then one or two seasons of complete stuff that would never happen that's the perfect balance Hmm. but you personally would you go more for fantasy or realism when you're making a career mode or watching a career mode it depends on the career mode like if you're doing a road to glory if you're doing a road to glory you have to do things more like, not real. Like, I signed Christian Pulisic. He's not going to play for Swindon Town after he's playing for Borussia Dortmund. It's not going to happen. So you, But you kind of need those players in your road to glories to be able to help you get to the higher leagues. In real life, it's a lot harder than just to sign the best young players that you can. It's a video game, so you have to be kind of un- unoriginal, I guess you could say. Whereas that, in bigger yeah. career modes, you can do more original, realistic signings because they're already good enough to play for your team as is. That's just mm-hmm. my opinion. And MGH, MGH made a good point in that he said that he wants to beat Bayern Munich, which is arguably the best team in in the game. You could argue that, uh, I would say. And for him to do that, he needs to sign some of the best players in the world. Maybe that's unrealistic. So you could say that, like, in order for him to beat, you know, the likes of Bayern Munich, he needs to sign young 85-plus potential players. So that kind of goes along with what Tyler's saying is that, like, his isn't a road to glory, per se, in the traditional sense. But if he wants to, you know, win championships, then he does kind of have to need to sign mm, somewhat unrealistic. And that's what kind of it is. Sam, how do you where do you fare on the unrealistic versus kind of or realistic versus fantasy for career modes? Um, personally, I like playing realistic career modes. I like the idea that career mode is a simulation of real life um, and you're just sort of 
going in the future and seeing what could happen in in real life. I like realistic career modes. That's what I'm all about. The problem I think with YouTube is defining a realistic signing because how do you know if it's realistic if it hasn't happened yet? How can you tell? Because maybe a few years ago, you know, you'd say maybe Hazard to Chelsea isn't a realistic signing. When he was at Lille, you think maybe he'll move on to something bigger in France. Like, you don't know... You don't really know who's going to sign for who until it happens. And then it's a realistic signing because it's happened. So I think, like, obviously you got the obvious ones. Like, if you're playing in, if you're playing in Germany, you sign German players. That's pretty obvious. Like, Bayern Munich will probably sign German players. You take a look at history. Obviously, you can sort of define some realistic signings. But the biggest problem is defining a realistic signing for me. But I personally like realistic career modes. But I think they're really difficult to do because, especially on... on um, YouTube because everybody has their own definition of a realistic signing and I think that just makes it really hard to please everybody because you make a signing that you think is realistic like if I made if I signed a bowler to Gladbach I'd be like that's a pretty realistic signing but someone will be like that no that's not a realistic signing he wouldn't move to Gladbach so that's the problem there is defining a realistic signing makes it difficult to do a realistic career mode on YouTube that's why most of my career modes aren't realistic on YouTube. I, I do a lot of realistic career modes off YouTube. I think it's much easier because I think I know what a realistic signing is. So as far as on YouTube, I think you have to have a balance. Like it depends on the team that you're doing, obviously. Like I've done PSG and Arsenal. So with PSG, realistic signings, Messi could go to PSG. I mean, they can afford him. Um, but would it happen? Probably not. So I don't know. I think on YouTube, it's really difficult to do realistic career modes and I think that's why Road to Glories are so niche because you try and make them realistic, but not a lot of people watch it because it is realistic. I don't know. It's a weird balance. Yeah. And you brought up, you brought up a good subject of that. Like everybody has their own goddamn opinion on what is realistic. You know what I'm saying? Like I was seeing in his comments, like there were so many people out of the woodwork that apparently were Bundesliga like experts. It was like, uh, and munching, moreover, like munching Gladbach experts. I was like, I did not know this many people, like English speaking people, like followed this team and followed the Bundesliga this hardcore. Mm -hmm. It was like, this whatever happened. It was like, they have no, they have, it was like, they have no track record of signing Swiss players ever. And then, like, so and so was a... like, yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like, and so and so, like, I was like, and so it was like, oh, it'd be far more realistic. I could see him at Wolfsburg. I could see him at, it was like, I could see him at Bayern. But there's no way he would ever go to Manchester Gladbach. Like, just, just so much. Like, no, he would never do this. That would never be realistic. And you bring up a very good point of we don't know what realistic is until it happens. Like, who could have predicted Shakiri to Stoke, to 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 freaking Stoke, Perfect one of like example, the brightest. Yeah. Yeah, one of the brightest talents in all of Europe playing for, uh, you know, Bayern Munich goes to boring Stoke. And I love Stoke. I did a crimo, <laughs> but I'm sorry. <laughs> boring, boring Stoke Aloda. Like, it's it's mad. We don't know what it is, but there there is... I also want to stress that it's, it's okay. Just because you like realistic doesn't mean that everybody likes realistic, and that's okay. Like, just because you like kind of more out there crazy signings and other people like realistic they can like their stuff too it's okay <laughs> it's just a matter of taste it's not right or wrong it's it, at the end of the day youtube comes down to entertainment if you find realistic more entertaining yeah that's your deal go watch more entertaining people if if not then you know if you like more fantasy based you can go and there's all that plethora there's all that plethora on youtube right now you could see more uh, crazy, crazy, you know, like Super League. There's every, probably <clears throat> almost every single kind of career mode can be done, like, right now on YouTube. So if you want, you know, that taste, go find. There are a lot of young, hungry creators that are making very specialized content. You could go ahead and find it. That's, like, kind of the beauty of YouTube. Jason, I didn't get your opinion. How do you feel about uh, Unrealistic versus Fantasy, by the way? Uh, I think I'm going to agree with Tyler's comments. It's... It's important to find like a good balance. Um, for me, I tend to go for more realistic on YouTube. Um, but you know, I had cases in my West Ham save where I brought in Antoine Griezmann the second season, and half of the comments were like, "What did you just do? This isn't realistic." And then I addressed in the next uh, the next episode. And then you know, like half of them came back and, and they were supporting me because if you want to go on to do bigger things, you have to sign bigger players. 
And, I mean, signing some pretty average player to West Ham, that's not going to improve your chances at making Champions League football. It's it's just not. So you have to bring in talent. And one more thing I wanted to note is that crew mode, it's not very realistic at all. You can nope. pretty much Definitely. abuse you can abuse the youth academy, find some good goalkeepers, sell them off in a year, and you can just get mass amounts of money, and then you can afford whoever you want. So, I mean, it's it's a tough argument to make. I think Kruma is not realistic at all, and having holding people so accountable to realistic signings, it's kind of ludicrous in my opinion. To add on to that point, he has a fair point that Kruma isn't realistic because, like in Road to Glory specifically, you can sign players that are like in real life, have such high release clauses in their contract for, like, next to nothing. Like, Donis Avdiai, he's on loan to a team in Austria from Schalke. He has, like, a 55 million euro buyout clause. And you can buy him for, like, a million in career mode. Like, it's dumb. It's dumb how it works like that. And people want it to still be realistic, but at the same time, the game mode itself isn't realistic. Yeah, you yeah, can abuse... Another, another problem I see with realism especially with uh, lower clubs in lower leagues is you can get a club from league two to the premier league in four years pretty easily. Oh, like mm-hmm. that's easy, but mm-hmm. that doesn't you could really win happen it in four years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest problem with me is you see a lot of clubs moving through oh. league two to premier league in the span of 10, 15 years, but you can't do that on, on YouTube. So if you want to do like, it almost has to be like, um, who got back to Swansea city. You almost have to be a Swansea city who got back to back to back promotions. Like in real life, it did happen. So it can happen, but it's so weird to watch a road to glory and in four years this league two team is challenging for the premier league and then it's like well they made realistic signings they signed players young players with bad overalls that have good potentials so in a way they were realistic but then how the hell is this team challenging for the premier league and the champions league four or five seasons in is really difficult and i think another another problem with it uh career mode not being realistic is ai signings I've just mm-hmm. seen some ridiculous AI signings. Like, Diego Costa to Borussia Dortmund. That happens for me all the time. Why would Diego Costa go to Borussia Dortmund? I don't understand that. It's just, it's a whole heap of things, and I agree with Flick. Career mode, the actual game mode, isn't realistic, and I think that's a big problem. Trying to make a realistic career mode on YouTube in an unrealistic game mode, I think that's a big problem as well. To mm-hmm. add on to your point where you said the clubs in Road to Glories go on to win the Premier League in like four seasons... The thing is, the people that say they love realism, they're also the same people that get really upset when you don't get promoted in a certain season in your road to glory. They freak yeah. out and say like, hey, how did you not get re- promoted? You're so shit, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you say you want realism, but at the same time, you want me to get promoted back to back to back to be able to yeah. win the Premier League. Like, it doesn't just, make any sense to me. Just play better, Tyler. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah, that's that's that says so that's going to be the response. That's going to be the response in in the comment section. It's like, well, you should have. They're like, they were good enough. You should have. You should have just played better. I could like, uh, how many how many comments that I've gotten? It was like, I play on legendary and I boss it every single time with like Swindon Town. Like, it's just like, all right, cool, cool, bro. <laughs> I don't but that's the other thing is that I think it's also that <sighs> Munching Gladback is actually a very strong team with a lot of good youngsters on it. So it was kind of weird that like, I, I don't know about you guys, and I think I'm, uh, I think I'm the weakest FIFA player out of you guys, but oh, I think on, <laughs> on on world class, I think all of us could probably beat or win the Bundesliga in your first season with Munch and Gladbach, <sighs> probably even on legendary. So the fact that he says that he needs to sign the best players in order to beat uh to uh to beat Bayern Munich I don't know if that really holds true but if he wants to go on and win Champions League and win a treble with Mönchengladbach then yeah I could see that he needs he definitely needs to sign players like like Mbola and that so it's a little bit a tough. lot of times a lot of times I've done Bundesliga career mode Bayern Munich are pretty shit anyway like they don't <laughs> yeah they don't, they're not dominating the league like they do in real life. And like, they usually, same with La Liga as well, man. So many seasons, and it's happened on YouTube as well, in my PSG and Arsenal series, Real Madrid don't make the Champions League. Or they make yep. it, and they don't get out of their group. Like, they start, you know, winning the Europa League. It's just, <laughs> back to Flick's point, career mode is not realistic. It's just not a realistic game mode right now. And that's a huge problem for career mode people trying to make realistic content. But it is, 
I mean, I think there is, you guys are stressing about this balance of realism, and there, there is a certain point, because you could really, if you really wanted to, you could just abuse the shit out of, like, pre-contracts and all that stuff, and just absolutely go bonkers in a couple years, but I feel like when people go, or this isn't for everyone, but I feel like a lot of people that go on to career mode, especially for the bigger teams, they watch it to see their team win. And to see their team be better than they are in real life is and you can just look at it it's the proof is in the pudding like if you watch views for any long series of any of the big youtubers or small youtubers what are the episodes that always get the most views it's the transfer windows and that's why i remember when i started watching that's that's the bread and butter because that is that's that rpg element of you you know you've done well you've earned this money and now you've you've grown your talent or you made them play well so now their value is higher now you get to go ahead and make a return on that investment and get an even stronger and upgrade your team and that's kind of what career mode i feel like is really about one yeah it's about winning and playing good gameplay but if you watch the views people want your team to get really strong but there is kind of that like that weirdness of that like you can't get too strong right away otherwise it kind of kills it for people but i feel like yeah that's pretty true though have you guys ever, like, made a signing that you felt like, uh-oh, like, this, this just changed everything and I think I'm, I'm too strong now? Or have you guys ever made a signing that there was the biggest, like, backlash against you, I would say? Like, Jason said that, like, Griezmann, like, there was not, there, there was not too many people happy about mm -hmm. him signing Griezmann. Well, uh, you, you know, there there were a lot of people voicing out. I think there were a fair amount of supporters as well. But, you know, it's going to be the ones that are in favor that leave a comment all angry about it you I mean you could very well have be half and half or maybe even 60 40 for people in favor of it but it's going to be those people that leave in comments that aren't in favor of it yeah the vocal minority yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah because here's here's the funny thing about this embolo thing is the reason why i used embolo in my career mode isn't because that i wanted to use him because i had that instinct of oh he's overused i put up a straw poll on I gave I gave the people three choices uh, for who I was gonna use, um, which player to bring in, and Embolo won by a landslide. Like a, like he was the most popular vote. I, I, this was at the beginning of FIFA 16, so maybe that's like a little bit different since you haven't seen him with everybody yet. Mm -hmm. But as we said, we haven't really seen him anywhere. Like we literally haven't seen Embolo pretty much anywhere except in like, oh, these are good young players to buy a video, um, and he won. And I think that if MGH would have asked his, like, if he would have asked, like, people to vote, it would have been very interesting. I would have wanted to see how Mbolo would have ended up in voting as opposed to, like, some other young strike. Like, him versus Jota, if he was going to say, like, ah, oh, who should I sign him or Jota? Mbolo would have won by landslide. Yeah. But, and then people couldn't have said anything. So it's it's kind of weird. It's and we see it all the time. Everybody yells at you in the comment. Like every single one of us has had sign in bolo on every single one of our freaking career modes. And MGH finally goes and he he maybe it's just one guy who's going on everyone's channel and saying sign in bolo, but I highly doubt that he finally made that guy happy. You know, that guy in the comment section that says sign in bolo. He finally made it happy and then people fucking lost their minds. And that's I think that's that's dub. That's kind of. Crazy. I think to that point where you said there's so many people clamoring to sign in Bolo, you got to think about a loud minority versus a silent majority. People aren't going to comment on a video, don't sign in Bolo when you're not signing in Bolo. Yeah. So uh, you could have two or three comments. You could have a majority of your comment section saying sign in Bolo, but that is still a minority of the actual viewers. So when you do sign in Bolo, that's when you get the backlash because the silent minority, uh, the silent majority begins to comment and be like, dude, why just sign in Bolo? So just because they they dominate the comment section doesn't mean they dominate dominate the viewers, like as far as who wants to see in Bolo. Mm. But with the voting thing, that's completely different when you got the votes because that's pretty much everybody watching voted think for that. I think he put it up on his straw poll. He put up a straw poll on Twitter asking, are people, are you guys really upset about Mbolo? And uh, I think the actual, the actual votes were mostly, uh, they didn't care. So it's kind yeah. of weird. Maybe. Again, like, a loud and, minority. Yeah. And if people I'm looking through, watching. and if I'm looking through like, here, let me read some more of these comments. There were a lot of them <laughs> that were in the top of this. 
Like, I don't know if any of them actually mention Mbolo. Like, the first three that I read, um, I think only out of all these, I, I earmarked, like, four of them. Let's see. It's disappointing he got rid of key players and signed generic career mode signings. He doesn't actually say Mbolo by name right there, but I guess you can imply Mbolo from there. Uh, let's see. Give original players a fucking chance, for God's sake. And don't train Christensen. He's on loan. Goodness, you fucked the team already. That one had 220 dislike, uh, uh, likes, by the way, and 30 replies. That one, you might have a point. You probably shouldn't be training a guy that you, you have on loan. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Michael, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, summed it up best, apparently. You fucked up the team within one episode, dot, dot, dot. That one had 252 uh, likes. And yeah. So I think only out of out of the ones, those were the, the highest ranked ones. I think only a couple of them really went toward Mbolo. I think they were more towards him uh, basically, yeah, selling kind of key players to the team, which, I, I mean, I can understand. I, I understand his point of view, too. If I don't like a player, I'm sorry. Like, if I can't make that work, I can't make good gameplay. And if I can't make good gameplay, then I can't make entertaining content for you. Mm -hmm. So it's in both of our best interests that if I don't like a player, he's not playing well for me, that I have to go ahead and move him on. Not every single player is going to play well under the same manager. So I feel like realism, realistic-wise... Like you need to, you need to make your best decision, and whatever is best for your series at the time is the way that you guys should go. I'm just Most curious, like, call. go ahead, Not Sam. Definitely. All right, I'll go. go. All right, I'll go. Um, you guys are. <laughs> um, I'm just curious how he came to that decision that he wasn't a big fan of the players. Like, did he decide that in the preseason tournament? Did he play off screen? It seems like a really quick amount of time for him to come to the judgment that these guys can't fit into the team and I can't learn to play with them. Just just because they don't fit his play style doesn't mean they're bad players. I think mm. he said, if I remember correctly, it was maybe in episode two, he said that he played with them in the FIFA 16 demo and didn't oh. like them then. Oh. It's like, wow. come on, you at least <laughs> well, have to give them another is, chance. But that's, 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 that, I would say that's hearsay. That's hearsay. We don't know. I would say that, you know, Chani, and I think most of all of us have played, usually if we're about to do a team, we play with that team and we try the players out. Don't. You don't? You don't? I don't. I, know. I don't no, either. I don't. Really? I actually I do. Think I think I just jumped into I know. the mode, yeah. 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 I know Chani plays with them uh, off screen before he starts the career mode a couple of times to get a feel of the team and see which players that he wants to sell early on. I haven't watched. I think he released like the you know the the prequel episode or whatever it was like episode one and where he, he gives the announcement about Munch and Gladback. I'm not totally sure if he if he said if he said why. But let's give him the benefit uh, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say does does he need to be beholden to if he doesn't like he could look on paper and say like this guy's not fast enough or like whatnot and say that he shouldn't. But he's gonna I guess I guess at the same time then he should be he he can't be really shocked if if they are key players to the team and you sell them and people aren't going to get upset, especially for a team that's kind of more niche. Like, the people that like Munch and Gladbach, they like. Like, you know what I'm saying? They aren't the casuals, I feel like. You know, the people mm. like it, and those... You don't think so? You think they're no, just, you think they're think just casual MGH comment. fans that are just bandwagoning? I think a lot of people that commented you know, you fucked up the team, don't even watch the team. And no. their, most of their yeah. knowledge from the players and the team just comes from career mode. <laughs> that's, yeah. I honestly believe that. I believe that too. Yeah, because like lot. you said, yeah. there's not very many Gladbach fans like in real life. It's, a yeah. lot of them are just going to be MGH fans. I'm like, oh, you know, Bundesliga league career mode, Gladbach's a good team and they think they're experts on the subject. Hmm. You know what this might be? It's, it's, it's the internet phenomenon of like, it's either this career mode is the greatest thing ever or it's the worst thing ever. Because you know what's a comment that I've never seen ever on a career mode? Yeah, this career mode's very mediocre. It's about middle of the road. It's, it's all right. Yeah. No, I, I, I haven't received a comment like that either. It's, yeah. it's very yeah. uh, one spectrum or the other. Yeah, and I think... Like he like for for better or for worse the decisions that he made turned a couple of people wrong and then that's that fucking uh, he has an angry mob and he has a bigger mob than anyone else on career mode right now so once that early mob turned on it uh, you just look into the comments and that negativity just kept on going you know and I think it kind of turned people against it and that's that's kind of the, the the darker part of the internet I guess but it's kind of where it goes and honestly I think it's fine. His, his career mode is fine. Like, the, uh, uh, all of us, I think, is like, it's fine. Right? I think like, he'll move uh, on. It'll it'll yeah. die down. 
yeah. yeah. People will still watch it at the end of exactly. the day. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I think I think we pretty much solved this. <laughs> that, case closed. Yeah, yeah case closed. It's fine. Good work, Master yeah. Debators. Yeah. It was like we understand we've under we understand why he got hate for it and I I think like he'll probably understand like why he got hate for it, but it was probably undeserved at the end of the day. Who do you guys here's a fun little thing. Who do you guys who do you, who do you think is the real Mbolo? What's a player that you've seen signed a lot for you personally? Mm, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. That is I a would, very good question. I would so, say so. So, like the same rating, same like young player with a lot of potential. Is is that what you mean? Who's a young potential player that you see signed by everybody okay. that actually that's, has yeah, been signed? I got by a everybody. player in mind. Yeah. So who do you got? You, okay, yeah, I think for me, at least at the starter crew mode, it was Ianacho. Yes, that was oh, my guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was everywhere. He was like, um, I signed him. Yeah. I mean, he was like a million, and you could just train him, train him, train him. And he was quick already, so you just had to work on his finishing. So, yeah, he was he was perfect. He fit FIFA 16 perfectly, and the training. That was pretty much yeah, my I guy. agree. I'll was give you Iannaccio. three names. Renato three names, Sanchez. Wow. Yep. Leroy Sané, yeah. yep, and yeah, Bazour, <clears throat> Bazour, yeah, yeah, Bazour him, is this, yeah, this Tillemont year's. as well, but I, some, I think Tillemont falls more in the category of Mbolo, where he, yeah, he's exactly. known yeah. as an oversigned player, but you don't really see too many people signing him. I think I, he falls in that category. I've seen him sign yeah. like twice. Yeah, I think I've seen yeah, him you know, sign twice. Yeah. Tillemont is actually a really interesting one because he's been good for a couple of years now. So I feel yeah. like it's it's become even more acceptable to sign him this year than it has in, in past years, in my opinion. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, he's not certain, a solid rating. There are certain, yeah, there are just certain players that are acceptable for you to sign. And they're more so, it's like pre-con. Like last year, if you didn't sign Fabian Schar in that, first window you were just dumb you know mm. what i'm saying like why would you not sign a really really talented center back <laughs> on a free or like mm. yeah so it, it is it is an interesting i don't know it's it's this weird thing it's this weird thing that gets into like uh like the 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 Kurumo community that some players are are worthy of being signed and then other players aren't and honestly it's like but i think at the end of the day like uh, I think it you you're you get considered lazy if you're one of the big guys and you sign one of these people. Like as you said, you signed you signed Ian Nacho. I'm pretty sure no one gave you shit about signing Ian Nacho, Jason. Or did you get a no, few comments? No, not really. And I think at the start of career mode, he wasn't overused per se because he was new to the new to the market. So it was mm. still okay to sign him. Yeah, and I signed Ambolo. I've yet to get a negative comment about signing Ambolo. But that we're just like kind of smaller guys, so we can kind of get away with signing kind of like the bigger names like ah oh, they didn't know any better i guess but if you're someone like mgh you can't i guess you you just can't that, which kind of sucks like you're kind of just not allowed to use like your best like the best young players but at the same time yeah but at the same time you got to think about like there's so many good young strikers rip sam's headphones <laughs> there's so many good I, young i was watching yeah. flick dab just then he oh yeah was just dabbing. <laughs> no, i thought he was coughing I just looked over at Sam and saw his earphone fall out of his ear. Sam's being all about that earphone. Next time I'll switch it up with the the left arm. Oh, yes, yes. And on that note, let's go ahead and since we've been talking about as as MGH uh, was wrong or whatever, I think we've kind of covered some of the points of this. What do you guys, uh, every single one of you guys, think makes a good career mode on YouTube? Sam, you've been talking about... You know, off of YouTube, you like that realism life. But on mm-hmm. YouTube, what do you think, like, personally makes a good career mode as a viewer? Or you could talk about from both sides. Like, who do you like to watch and why? Or when you go into the creative process of making a career mode, what do you like, per se? Well, I don't really consistently watch many career modes nowadays especially fifa 16 i just i don't know i i don't really watch any career modes other than i'd say the guys obviously in our chat i sometimes watch them but even that consistently i don't watch every episode of any career mode out there i did last year for spencer spencer owen and that's pretty much it like i i don't know as far as viewing i think maybe because i'm so invested in career mode I don't view it to take a break from it. 
but as far as content creating, I like making great teams. You know, obviously with PSG, I signed Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar, like the best players possible. Um, and just trying to win as much silver as I can. Um, with Arsenal, it's been a bit different. I've sort of been building something a little bit more. Um, as far as a creative process, I like signing players that are good, but that people don't really give the credit for that they're really, really good. That's sort of what I go for. So, like, someone like... Although Pjanic was already at Arsenal, I feel like Pjanic doesn't get the love that he deserves. I think he's a really, really good player in FIFA and in real life. And I think a lot of people don't give him the attention that he deserves. So, I'd try and sign that player and put him in the spotlight. Um, Or if they're already at the club, I'll keep him there. Like, Kurzawa. I had so many people telling me to sell Kurzawa and buy Alaba. And I was like, I'm sorry. I actually like Kurzawa more. So, I'm going to keep Kurzawa there. Um, Just playing with players that I enjoy. I'm... The one thing I'd say I'm different with a lot of people on on com- in the comment section is I really don't give it. I don't care about rating. You could be a 75 rated player, but if you play really well, you will be starting in my team. Like I have Daniel Verde in my Arsenal career mode, uh, who's an absolute beast. He's 79 rated. Recently hit 80. Sometimes he's better than Sterling. Sometimes he's better than Campbell. So I'll play him. You know, for me, it's like I don't. I'm trying to build good teams but not in the terms of ratings. I'm just trying to play with players that I enjoy. Um, but as far as viewing purposes, as I said before, I don't consistently watch anybody. Sorry. Mm. What do you think, uh, Tyler? Do you... <laughs> well, I agree with Sam. I don't but we'll, really we'll, watch we'll, we'll, many. How about this? I from, think, you go I from think... calling him addicted. <laughs> yeah, I agree with Sam. <laughs> Sam knows I think, I think, well, this is this is an issue, like, kind of privy to us since we, we make career mode content. We often, like... We we just we we're we're making so much of it that for our release, like for our escapism, we actually go to other people's videos. But think back, like when you first started, before you started making YouTube videos for on career mode, like why were you watching, so and so back then? What made that career mode good? I guess is uh, what I would say to Tyler. I know Tyler, you love that Master Bucks. You love that Master Bucks. Used to that, like more his dick. Um... Yeah, but uh, <laughs> why did you why did you love that older career mode? Uh, I'd say when I used to watch, it was always about the growth. Like, I didn't really care what team you were. But as long mm. as you were getting better every single window and replacing players that weren't good enough, that's what I wanted to see. And I think... I'm 100% with I don't you. know. I don't know what I was going to say there. No, but no, I- that's the spirit. That's what I'm saying. Is That's why. That is the... I would say that's the top reason why people watch career mode is that growth is replacing as you can see you see that the team gets stronger and stronger and stronger every single career mode and like and that was the reason why i would used to watch it too what do you think and they're like is that what do you think makes a good career mode when you're creating it though creating it's a different thing it's just basically about not what you enjoy but about what gets the most views because i might not enjoy signing bigger players i might enjoy signing more unknown players but will that get the views no, I won't. So maybe if I'm doing a career mode off screen, I'll sign the players I want to sign. But on screen, I have to kind of sign the big name players that people want to see. And therein lies why MGH kind of has to sign certain players. Like a lot of he got a lot of shit in his Portsmouth career mode as well for signing Rufin Lotz's cheek. You know, early on, who else did he sign? Didn't he sign like Ian Acho or someone or Ambrose? Like really on in the Portsmouth. I think he's on Ambrose. I I didn't watch a single yeah. episode of that. I'm with Sam on this. Sorry. One. <laughs> um, but he was getting shit. He was just like, "Oh, really? You're gonna sign these people?" Like really early on, and it was just like, "It's a road to glory," and he's the biggest career boat channel. If he doesn't sign big names, uh-huh. he has he. I'm, that's his income, man. Like he has to. He is kind of a prisoner of his own success, and that he has to sign a certain amount of players. And then I think that we all feel, as you know, like YouTubers, that you kind of need to sign someone with name recognition, at least one player. You can sign like one player, and it's like, oh yeah, I signed Messi, and then I kind of snuck in Jota, this this you know this Peruvian guy who's kind of good. But anyway, Messi, and then you kind of like you hope you kind of put like. You put Messi out there, but then you put, like, your, your kind of underdog guy out there. And it's like, hey, that guy's pretty good. Was that Messi? No, that's this guy. And then you kind of try to push him to the forefront. And I, I guess that's like, kind of, like, the best balance. But there is kind of a, a prison that you get into when you are when you become, like, r- relatively successful on YouTube that you do kind of have to sign rather big-name players. Um, Jason, where do you where do you fall on this? Do you 
uh, when you do you still watch certain people or when you when were you were watching back in the day what did you find most appealing about Karimos or what made a good Karimo? Yeah, I still watch the occasional career mode video now, uh, but I definitely watched more back when I wasn't making YouTube videos. For me, my first big career mode was uh, FIFA 13, Cal Freezy's QPR series. Ooh, oh, and I the legendary series. one. Yes, yeah, it, was, it was a great series. I thought a lot of people can agree with me on that one. Um, but the reason I liked that one so much was a point that's been brought up right. It was the player growth. Luis Muriel was the star of that series. And just seeing him progress and score goals. And like eventually, I think he made a compilation of all the goals. That was just awesome to see. And that's why I enjoyed it so much. But turning the tables to like content creation now, the thing that I try to do most in my series is get viewers involved. And I found that when I get the viewers involved, like really heavily, and make the career mode, um, the channel's career mode, not just my career mode, um, I found like they're a lot better received. And, uh, one other thing that I, I look for in a good career mode is using lesser known players. I mean, it's okay to have some some higher rated players in there because you know you have to find that balance of getting a good amount of views and making sure it's it's searchable and that kind of stuff. Um, but using that lesser known players and having an aspect of learning in career mode is big for me as well. Mm. Going back to Cal Freeze's QPR career mode, I think Please. what made that career mode so good was he signed players that could go to QPR yeah. and that had high potentials at the same time. Like Muriel, he was at, who was he at back then? Who would he Oof. have been at? Udinese? Is it, I Udinese think it was Udinese, Udinese yeah. 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 Like he could have got, because QPR, they're a London-based club. They have quite a decent amount of money. You've seen how much, how many players they signed. They just signed the wrong players in real life. So mm. he signed players that, <laughs> they signed the whole team that was wrong um, they could sign Muriel <laughs> like that that could have been a thing back then mm -hmm. um, especially when QPR had just recently been promoted could have splashed some cash and it was a progressive thing it wasn't he didn't go from you know he had how many episodes of that career mode like he didn't go from recently promoted to winning the <sighs> Premier League it was a grad it was a really like he just hit the curve where you want to hit it like every season was on point he was growing by just enough he went from just rel uh, just promoted to mid table to fighting for europa league champions league to fighting for top spot to winning the like it was a gr it was the best curve i've seen in a career mode it was on i think honestly it goes down as my favorite career mode that i've ever watched it was mm -hmm. so good like that's why it was so good he signed the right players that could go to qpr qpr are uh, pretty they were an okay club back then. I mean, they'd just gotten promoted and no one really knew much about them, but they're a London-based club, which is really important. And he just hit that curve. Like, he just... Every, like, he was just growing the way QPR could have if they signed the right players. I think that's what made it so good. That's, that's actually really, really interesting. So I think through all of us rambling on for this about an hour and a half, we figured that it's... it's, it's Everybody thinks that, like, oh, making a career mode is kind of easy. It's just like you play career mode, whatever, you sign whoever. But what I've realized from us talking is that it really is this really delicate, fine line. Like, we keep on talking about, like, it's that, it's that, it's that razor-thin edge between realism and keeping it right above the line, but just right above that line so it hits that fantasy level, but not too far that all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is unrealistic, this would never happen. You want to kind of, it's almost like a, it's almost like, like professional wrestling. I apologize to the WWE fans. You're like, you expand. Like, yeah. Well, it's like, you know, like when you're a kid and you're like watching wrestling, you don't want to believe that it's not real. You know what I'm saying? And then like, but there, there's certain points when all of a sudden mm. you see like the, the cable like flying up or like Undertaker eating a milkshake on Twitter. Like there's like, there's certain <laughs> eating that, a milkshake. Oh, okay. it's, As an American, does. It's, an, it's an American thing. It's an American <laughs> thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but, but there's certain, you know, there's certain aspects of it where it's like all of a sudden, like it breaks, it breaks the, the suspension of disbelief is what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, like, it's like, okay, just something doesn't click anymore. And I think that's, like, what defines, like, a really good career mode. And just getting a good enough player and not making those power jumps, like, too quickly, I think is what kind of, like, defines. Like, for me recently, I think the best career mode that I've seen recently was last year was Channing Sports doing Crystal Palace. 
because mm-hmm. he was signing he never signed anyone mad he signed people that were in that range of crystal palace that were like mid-range um like middling kind of like middling premier league talents like right on the cusp of uh, like being good and then he turned those players into legends like he outplayed their stats he was like higher than the ratings could be and he would gradually upgrade and get like a slightly better player a slightly better player and like when he ended it out i think he only really had like a barely startable like roster like only maybe like half of that team could make the starting roster on like a tottenham essentially and I think what's incredible about, like, all of this is that I don't think if Cal Freezy made a Q- that QPR career mode today on YouTube, it would get it would even get noticed because there's too much wow. competition now. You know what I'm saying? If, like, no, because he still has he's a more subscribed. No, 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 no I'm saying, OK, I'm saying I'm saying if MG uh, if Cal Freezy didn't have the subs that he had now. Let's say he's a new okay. guy and he starts yeah, out he and he never, makes exactly yeah. the same career mode. He There's wouldn't no get noticed. I, I agree, but like back jumping back to FIFA 13, he still had a pretty good amount of subscribers at the time. Like yeah. you have to think about things. There were were not as many people making career mode content, so he was able to get noticed. But I agree with you. Um I don't yeah, it's I, it's a matter of getting noticed. Like yeah, maybe the the couple people that did see that career mode, yeah, they did enjoy it, but for it to receive like the wide recognition, it's yeah. it's tough to do. Because even like, back because then, now, it was QPR, play. yeah, QPR are really like a recently promoted team now. There, so like, but I understand what you mean. Like, if it, if it was the same situation, QPR being promoted, and there was a little bit of buzz about QPR, then yeah, I I know what you mean. Like, <laughs> no way in hell anybody would be searching a QPR career mode. Yeah, but that's because back then it was what him and MGH maybe Masterbox. Him, MGH, like Masterbox were like the only three yeah. that did it at the time. So, yeah, like, was, yeah. yeah. Like, if we're going to get YouTube nerdy about it, you search up FIFA 13 career mode, it's those three that are going to pop up. Like, he was going to get searched. You know what I'm saying? So, that's like, it's kind of weird that, like, uh, he could have done it now, but kind of what made those career modes special, like, I don't know if you can do now unless you are a big channel. Because, definitely, I can't be like, oh, it can never be done again. But then Chani kind of did it last year so can i ask you guys something what was your no. very first no okay <laughs> yes, well, I'll, just, I'll pass over completely. <laughs> right. now what was your very first promo that you did on youtube that i did watched or or watched, watched or no did. that you created that like you, you made a channel <laughs> and what team, what team did you use sunderland last Leeds season. united F- fifa 15 was my first sunderland, sunderland. Leeds united b Soul, like it was a Korean team. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> and this and this proves my point. Mine was York City. These are not huge teams, but it was teams that that we kind of wanted to use. You know, it was yeah. a sense of a sense of like growing. In uh, I did two at the time. I was doing PSG as well. Okay, well <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, take the, the, I'll take the Sunderland example. Uh, but yeah, yeah I think I think that kind of shows the point. Like when you're first starting YouTube, it's. You you make the content that like like kind of what you enjoyed seeing in a career mode, and I think for a lot of us it's that aspect of growth. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's like you we start off when we start our channels doing what we want to do and want to see want to see personally, but then when you hit a certain amount of subscribers, you're like, wow, I got that many views on a video. I wonder if I can get more in a different video. So you really push to put out more videos that will get more views rather than putting out the videos that you enjoy personally more. At least that's how it works in my opinion. I think I think there is a balance though. Like you need to if you're just doing it like purely for like the views, then I feel like YouTube they'll 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 find you out eventually. Like if you're not enjoying your content, you can kind of hear it and in, in the, the dispassionateness in in someone's voice. But I I think I, I do agree with you. That's like you could only get so far doing doing kind of smaller teams. Mm-hmm. And at a certain point, you have to do a bigger team. It's yeah. it's. MGH, Calfrizi, those guys, they had to get a certain, and um, Chani all had to get a certain number of subscribers by a certain point in order for them to sustain and do. It's kind of like this weird circle. You, you start off and you do kind of what you want. And then you realize that if you want to make it further, you have to do the bigger team. So, you know, with Chani, it's Liverpool. Uh, with, with MGH, it was Arsenal. And they have to get it to a certain level. And then once you reach a certain level you can kind of experiment and go back to doing what you want, which is, you know, like a smaller team again. 
So it's kind of this weird dichotomy. But I also feel that, like, MGH has this thing over him where he's kind of a prisoner to it. Because when you get to that, his level, you have a lot to lose. Like, and I think another thing that a lot of people aren't really, like, aren't really putting two to two together is right before he released his Munch and Gladback video, he released his house tour video, which is, I mean, it's a, it's, it's not like him like, hey, hey, motherfuckers, look how I'm living. It's like a very meager, it's a nice house, right? But it's still, it's, I mean, for lack of a better word, it's a gloat video. You know, that, like, you, you realize that, like, that video is going to make you know that this guy is making enough to buy a house, uh, a nice house, and make a living off of playing career mode. And this guy is a professional career mode YouTuber. It puts more of a spotlight on him that he has to make these spectacular signings. It's not, it's like, it's just not enough for him to sign in Bolo. You know what I'm saying? He needs to be perfect instead of us who have a lot more leeway because we all poor and broke as fuck that <laughs> we can just like, oh, we're dumb. We're like broke. We're kind of like, we can just do whatever the fuck we want, you know, and like, and kind of get away with it. But for him, if he's a professional, we're going to hold him. People are just going to hold him to a higher standard. And yeah, I don't know. That kind of sucks, which is kind of scary. Like, and the more successful that you get, you have to sign big players. Otherwise, because you got to maintain those views, even if you are doing, yeah. you know, something that you like or a Karima that you like, you kind of got to sign certain players that you don't like. Or maybe that are uh, that are bigger named. But, um, all right, so do you have anything else to say, Jason? Do you want to finish off your point on, on what makes a good career mode? Or are you good? No, I think I covered my points. All right, yeah. Uh, I, I think I've sprinkled in what, what I've liked. Uh, basically, as uh, you, you kind of like grow gradually. I myself, I'm terrible at taking my own advice because I just like shoot up as quickly as possible. I'm like a min-maxer because I come from more of a background. Like I love sports. And I love career mode, but I come from, like, a background of playing, like, Pokemon and RPGs and World of Warcraft, which is all, like, this is the least amount of effort for me to get the maximum amount of efficiency. And I want to get my golden legendary sword, which is my Lionel Messi or my Ronaldo, as quickly as possible. <laughs> so I'm about, all about, like, min maxes games. So for me, I always love transfer windows. Those are my favorite and seeing growth. I love... I love watching gameplay too. I love the occasional nice goal, nice build-up play, and like random glitches and stuff. But the the bread and butter is still like watching a team really grow and become something really powerful. And I, I think I echo your guys' sentiment that if I could go back, like when I started, like what I would like is to do kind of like Road to Glory is have like lower tier teams because that's the most fun. And for all you guys who have never done an actual Road to Glory, if you guys complain that career mode is boring this year and you've played it out, if, and if, if you have only played it with like your favorite team, like in the Premier League, like like Tottenham or Manchester United or Arsenal, and that's all you've done, now you say you're bored, shame on you. Go play with the League 2 team and it will, it fundamentally changes career mode. It will fundamentally change it for you. And with that note, we're going to go ahead we're going to spend this part of the time. We are we all play a decent amount of career mode. We're going to go ahead and give you guys all a little bit of a nugget at the end. These are we're going to go ahead. Each one of us is going to name a player that we think that you guys should be trying in career mode right now. Let's go ahead. I usually start off from Sam. So Jason, do you have a player lined up that you've been playing with that that you you recommend to the to the hundreds that I'm predicting will watch this? To the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> to the hundreds. Um uh, well, you know, some of my subscribers might already know this, but for me, one of the most underused players that I don't see enough, Daniel Marte, is just an absolute beast. I mean, he's, he's his so potential's good. not the highest. <laughs> yeah. He's got like 80 potential, but try him out, get him to his like peak rating. And the only thing that keeps him down are like some of his mental stats. Otherwise, he'd be like an 88 center mid, and it's it's ridiculous. He's just so so freaking good. Um, if you guys like want another player, um, just for my for my West Ham fans, I'll say Reese Oxford. I was surprised to see he has 85 potential uh, for oh, 65 rated players. So, not bad. Yeah, that goes totally to what Sam was saying about like overall ratings are dumb. Especially not just overall ratings. Overall potentials are dumb because. Yeah, really. A potential is we've all kind of I think we've all kind of done growth tests before on our channels. That's an estimate of how they will grow. You do not know which stats will grow. That is random for every single person. So if someone says that his Mbolo got like 97 pace and fucking like a million finishing, that's that doesn't dictate how yours could end up with like 88 finishing and 88 speed and have like 100 in attack position. That's kind of just how it goes sometimes. So whatever, if someone's working for you, like appreciate that, you know? I was saying, uh, Tyler. <laughs> yes, thank you for appreciating. You're loyal. Tyler, 
Yeah. Thank Lord. you. Tyler, do you Another have... one. Tyler, calm down. <laughs> do you do you have do you have a player too much that, CJ Khaled. Yeah, too much too much Khaled. Do you do you have a player? Do you have another one that, that we could add on to this? Fred. Oh I'm gonna go Fred. Not the right. one that is like bad and is a striker, but the center mid. Cause he's up to an eighty one right now, and I know Sam doesn't like ratings, but he's up to an eighty one and I'd compare him to how Conte is playing for Leicester in real life. Like he's good at going forward, he's good at going back, he can pretty much like, he's so fast that he just runs the midfield. He's all over the place. Like, you can this look is, at the heat map after the game, and he is all over the place. It's it's just a it's a picture of a fire emoji. That's his heat map. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty is much. It, but this so. is Fred I, I wanna, uh, from Shakhtar? Yeah, Fred from yeah, Shakhtar. Okay. Okay. I just want to specify. That. Okay. So, yeah. He just runs all over the place. And I, if I remember correctly, he has great strength. He has great stamina. Can play everywhere on the midfield. Not yeah? strength. Oh, okay. He's a little bit small, but he can play anywhere in the midfield. He has good defending, and he can go forward as well and has good pace. So, How's his finishing? I don't think his finishing is great, <laughs> but you can certainly train that. Okay. And, uh, Sab, who's your, who's your little hidden gem that uh, you've been playing uh, My with? man is uh, someone that I signed for Arsenal uh, this season. Uh, it's a centre-back from Marseille, Stefan Sparagna. Uh, I... Oh, no, I love this kid. He's, I, I found him in 15, and it was, you know how players sometimes glitch out? I think he might have glitched out because his potential, I mean, obviously it's just an estimate, but his potential was like 70-something, and he was like 82, 83, 80, and I saw him. <laughs> and I don't know why, but like he just looks like a footballer. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. He just sort of <laughs> looks like, yeah, this guy could be something one day. Um, in FIFA 16, they've upped his potential and his rating as well. Um, but he's a beast. He's not. He doesn't excel in it. Like he's not a pacey centre back. He's got decent pace, but he's not like eighty plus pace. Um, I don't know why. I just love him. He's a beast. Sign I have him, him for Marseille, obviously, because that's where he starts out. And I think he's at a yeah. seventy six overall right now for me in the second season. And like I didn't train him at all or anything. And he's a beast as a backup. So yeah, in Arsenal, I'd also five. recommend. In Arsenal, I'm five seasons in. Uh, he's like 81 or 82. He's just a squad nice. rotation player for me. But he's so just, I don't know, just looks like a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And my guy, he's he's no longer a hidden gem. I think everybody knows this guy's name by now. And I'm going to bring this up because I'm only really doing one career mode right now. And that is uh, Timothy Fosu Mensa, uh, the man who was incredible today. Until he wasn't, and then he had to go off the pitch. Until he got sent off. Yeah. Well, he didn't, uh, like, I feel like that's that's a credit to him that the moment that he left, they conceded yeah. three goals almost instantly. That, like, he should have gotten man the match, in my personal opinion. Uh, yeah. And he lives up to it. He might even be better in career mode. For a guy you say, you're talking about, like, plays better than his stats. And his stats are already really good. If you look at him, he's basically, like, a mini Pogba, and I don't want to shit on Reese Oxford, but I'm playing with Reese Oxford, and I'm playing with Fosu Mensa in my Luton Town save on stream, and I absolutely adore Fosu Mensa. Not to say that Reese Oxford is poor, but mm -hmm. but yes, Reece, he is. yeah, but <laughs> but but freaking Fosu Mensa can do it all. He can play in the center back position. He's got good enough stance to play there. But he is absolutely immense. He's the best in that CDM position. He's got the strength, stamina, not all that, not Reece at the Oxford highest. Can play there as well. <laughs> his pace is incredible, dude. Yeah, his pace, for a defensive his man. pace, his strength, and it, he wins literally everything that comes near him. He is an absolute tank. He's basically like an Amarte clone, essentially, but but cheaper. His like his potential is only going to be going up now. And if you go ahead and you train him up, I think right now you can take a look at my latest episode in the squad report in the second season. I did not train him in the entire first season. In the second season, I've actually gone to train him. He's gone up by plus seven. He's up to a 77 rated, and I prefer him to Kevin Manolas. Like, I trust him that much. The only time that he's given up a goal is literally the ball went through his foot. Like, the, his foot was there, and the ball teleported through his foot like a fucking ghost. And that's the only time he's ever conceded <laughs> in the goal. Like, that's how freaking great he so is. So he's shit. <laughs> as long as the game works he's pretty incredible if you have fucking teleporters then yeah he's not gonna be able to block it but besides that go ahead grab him he's pretty good you probably already know about him but he plays better than his stats personally great stuff great stuff and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna end it off by poking a little bit fun at ourselves we've we've given a little bit of stifling to mjh but i think we were pretty light on. i think we're all kind of 
uh, supportive of him. But since we revealed some of the nastiest things said to him, we're going to go ahead and reveal what's the worst comment that's ever been said to us. Uh, while you guys go ahead and time this up, I couldn't find my comment, but I'll just tell you the story of what happened to me. Uh, there was uh, a person, this this first sub, and this is a shitty thing, I can't even remember his name. <coughs> we call him, like, he, Steve goes ahead and comments on my channel, it's like, hey man, I really, I really like your, your videos, I appreciate, like, all the, the sound edits that you do. Uh, like, I realize I edit myself, and I realize that it takes a lot of time, and I love that, the amount of detail that you put into your career modes. It was like, keep up the good work. And that's like the best. That's the best comment that you could get. Because like, yes. Yes, Steve. I did it. It was like, I do put in a lot of time to this. And you recognized it. And I appreciate you. And I like wrote all that out. It was like, these are, yeah, it was like, these are the comments. These are the comments, man, that like make YouTube really worth it. So it was like, thank you. Thank you so much for noticing that. And I posted that. And then 30 seconds later, another person, a new guy comes in and says like, uh, Channy Sports is better. <laughs> Play with more fat. Right. <laughs> that is straight up. Yeah, V was Just telling me about up. this story on stream yesterday. Absolutely or, yeah, yesterday. Wrecked. Absolutely wrecked me. I was like, oh, what an amazing <clears throat> moment. And this guy just shit on me in 30 seconds. Uh, all right. Uh, who wants to go first with their, with their shitty comments? Tyler, you have it up on your phone? Damn it. All right. <laughs> Huh. So mine was, he says, I have more money in real life than your transfer budget. So I, said, <laughs> Ooh. I said, OMG, I wish I could be you. You're so cool. And he said, I wish I could be you, a freak on the Xbox slash PlayStation. Doesn't know which one I play on, even though it's on the screen. All day that has no girlfriend and no life because he's an ugly fuck. There's no face cam, so you can't tell what I look like. <laughs> it doesn't have any talents apart from being a pro gamer. Yo, we poofed her. Wow, that is elaborate. Oh, wow. It is. It was good. I liked it. It's just a, a rich kid that has nothing better to do but shit on YouTubers, apparently. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Oh, I'm sure he's really rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, for what team was this commented on? Marseille. Oh. And oh I spent God. all my budget. And Marseille's a pretty rich <laughs> team, as is. So okay. I, I was... don't understand. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. if this was on Swindon, I was like, legitimately, there might be a child out there <clears> that probably has more than, like, <laughs> 10 grand. <laughs> You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Jason, do you want to go next? Yeah, I don't know about, like, the worst comment I've ever received, because I kind of just blocked that shit out. Um, but I looked up, like, the last week or two, and this one, it was pretty simple, but it got to me. It was, like, on an older video where I was kind of struggling and losing a lot of matches. The comment purely said, can you win? That's it. <laughs> Oh, wow! <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know how to respond. I don't, <coughs> I don't know how uh, to respond to that. It's getting me. It's getting me all worked up now. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how to respond to that. Fantastic. You know what I imagine is just like there's a parallel universe where like where like Jason has created a time machine and he was like, this was the moment in time where I took my game to the next level and I needed that next push. And then he goes back in time and then he writes that <laughs> anonymous thing to, to, to old, his old self. He's just like, that'll get to him. Oh, that's crazy. Yep. That's can you win. Amazing. All right, Sam, bring us home. All right, my one probably beats everybody's. <laughs> it was, um, it's not really, it's not really the actual comment, but it's who comments it. Um, the, I'm, maybe some of you saw it because I got like seven or eight likes. The comment simply reads, I enjoy watching you suffer. I'm sorry. And the comment is by iGame in Tim. HD. Yep. <laughs> sorry, hit, that hurt. I remember that. That hurt me. Enjoying me suffer. That hurts. I may or may not have liked that comment. <laughs> no, I'm assuming you did. <laughs> oh, I did. But actually, I did have one that just went straight to um, the review section, and I just left it there. Um... I forgot, what, I don't know what he was talking about, but he ended it in, like, he was, like, complaining that I did something, then he's just like, you fat fuck, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know how you just got to that. Like, he was complaining about um, me selling a player or, like, signing a player that was around 30. Maybe it was selling. I think it was getting mad because I was selling players near 30. And he's just like, don't sell them, you fat fuck. I'm just like, okay, thanks. <laughs> just leaving you in the review section. <laughs> yes, where you'll delete sit in purgatory. Just delete it. All right, guys, and with that, we're going to go ahead and conclude this Master Debate Tours episode one of uh, this initial podcast. I don't know 
We'll be back next, but hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to check out any of these guys, there'll be annotations that have been on their faces this whole entire video. Just go ahead and click on them. <laughs> Uh, and go ahead and click on the Charmander, click on the teddy bear, click on just uh, Spongebob in the background back there. Oh yeah, click on Spongebob. Dude. Yeah, click on Spongebob in the background. Go ahead, check them out. They all have amazing stuff. You guys want to plug your shit? Sam, what are you doing right now on your channel? Arsenal career mode. We're finally back in the Champions League. I got them back five seasons in my career mode. So yeah, playing with some younger players, beasting and nice. feasting. Nice. And Tyler? Teddy bear. Rabble, 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 rabble. Okay, that's what you can expect on this channel. Do you no, really I, actually I want to plug your channel? <laughs> I had to. My, you my to... earbud fell out as well, so I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, uh, what, what's going on, on your channel right now, or what's what do you want to plug? <laughs> what's coming up on your channel? Uh, I have a Juventus career mode starting soon, and I'm doing Marseille currently. It's about to end season two, and I'm doing Swindon Town as a road to glory. Ah, nice. And Jason? Is that all? Three. No, series. I have more. It's going to only be two. All right, Jason, what are you doing right yeah, now? Yeah, I've got a West Ham crew mode save as well as some Ultimate Team content with legend Landon Donovan for any of you Americans. Uh, but some change via coming to the channel. So I guess subscribe and find out what it is. Ooh, Ooh playing the mystery card. Leaving a little teaser oh. there. So guys, if you want to go ahead and check out any of these guys, I suggest that you guys do go ahead and just click anywhere on the borders, essentially. And then I'll be leaving an annotation to their channels. You go ahead and click it right there. SpongeBob, Teddy Bear, and Charmander. Thank you guys for dropping by. Later. Bye.